thank you all for being here to listen how uh, the circular economy can support Europe to uh, address some of the great challenges we, we are currently facing. So CIRCTER has produced territorial evidence on various aspects related to the circular economy and its manifestations at uh, regional and local scales. It has critically assessed and discussed various circular economy concepts, definitions, and interpretations. It has analyzed how territorial factors affect the circular economy under a systemic perspective. It has regionalized data on material consumption and waste generation. It has explored the sectoral expression of circular economy, including circular business models, and it has provided guidance aimed at regional and local administrations. Today, I will try to address the policy questions raised by Laura before through two examples related to the two last points on the list, namely the sectoral expression of circular economy and the policy guidance. So what is the current state and potential of European regions with regards to the circular economy? I will try to answer this question from the perspective of employment. The maps on the screen show the relative weight of, in terms of employment of two sectors that could be considered enablers and to some extent also precursors of a circular economy. The map, the map to the left focuses on circular economy materials providers group, which includes all market segments that provide materials for circular economy, including both primary materials and inputs like renewable energy and, ener and bio-based materials, and also secondary materials uh, considered through waste management sectors. Material providers make a significant contribution already to European regional economies with around 3.3 million jobs and half a trillion euros in turnover. Due to, to the contribution of sustainable agriculture and forestry, which represent around half of these figures, material providers are concentrated in rural areas. Overall, the contribution to regional employment ranges from less than 1% up to 13% of total jobs. The map to the right focuses on circular economy technology providers. This group includes all activities that produce the necessary technical equipment and machinery for a circular economy and for material providers. It includes also the green technologies and services. It uh, accounts for around 2.5 million jobs and almost 400 billion euros in turnover. It represents between 1% and 3% of regional economies. That means that it's more evenly distributed than material providers, but tend to be, tend to be more concentrated in urban area and industrial areas. Circular economy technology providers are also developing more dynamically than material providers. So in general, the territorial evidence collected in sector tells that the circular economy is relevant for all types of territories, but it is materialized very differently between, um, depending on local conditions. The relevance of agglomeration economies for various circular business models where critical mass is needed, for example, think about product service systems or sharing economies, suggests that tendencies towards concentration of circular economy activities are likely to occur in, uh, rural, uh, in urban areas. So cohesion policies should articulate measures to prevent circular innovations from increasing territorial disparities. Opportunities to revitalize the economies of rural areas may emerge from the sustainable circular bioeconomy Still, from a cohesion perspective, this transformation could produce better results if implemented in a decentralized way. For example, through small-scale biorefining instead of large facilities. In any case, a big question mark remains in relation to the deep sustainability implications of such transformation. Industrial areas are the only possible setting for several circular economy strategies, such as industrial symbiosis, remanufacturing, and so forth. Industrial regions in decline may also find opportunities related to the availability of industrial plots or factories and other facilities that could host circular processes, including both material storage and transformation. So how to capitalize on regions, endogenous resources, and involve the local stakeholders? Regional and local administrations have a fundamental role to play to make circular economy transitions occur at these levels. Think, for example, of uh, waste management policies. Ideally, policy interventions need to be co-designed with local actors, coordinated with various sectoral policies, aligned with all the governance levels, and implemented in an integrated, integrated level. This requires a great deal of policy vision and also external support. SIGTAR provides um, guidance for the design of circular policies and strategies at regional and local levels through a stage-based approach that helps regional and local policymakers assess the local context and potential for a circular economy, define policy priorities, set out the right governance and implementation processes, 
and also ensure the right policy um, framework conditions via policy mixes and examples of um, good policy measures. And that's all from my side, from Sigler. Thank you. Many thanks, and thank you also for keeping to the, to the time. So our population in Europe is, is aging, uh, and many of our regions are losing people. Uh, we need a Europe with an effective, user-friendly, and widely adopted uh, digital uh, healthcare, uh, where we have the right uh, tools and services to ensure the health of our European citizens, both young and, and old, and to ensure that their health is, is improved, to ensure that healthcare uh, quality and access is increased, so that aging residents in rural communities can continue to access the care uh, that they need to meet their growing needs. Um, but also so that younger urban residents can benefit from personalized medicine to mitigate, for example, the effects of a chronic illness. So where do we stand uh, with digital health? And in particular, what are the, the economic and social impacts of digitalizing services in the health sector? And how can territories benefit from e-health solutions? To help us answer these questions, I would like to invite uh, Peter to come up for the second pitch. Thank you very much, Laurent, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, what I thought that before we discuss the uh, social and economic impact uh, of digitalization of healthcare, we have a thought about the fact that um, the social and economic status as a determinant of population health is equally important. So there is a circularity in the question itself. So digital technology in itself is a tool or a, or a means to deliver uh, better health care. It's both integrating health and social care and personalizing. And what we have seen in our study is that in many countries, while e-health strategies are popping up as new uh, ways of uh, dealing with health care in other parts of the world, especially in the Nordics, e-health is already part of business as usual. There is one health uh, strategy basically for the country and the digitalization is inherently included in it. So when we looked in our study, we had a spectrum of stakeholders and in one end there we had Finland, on the other hand we had uh, Bulgaria, so there was a disparity in the study itself. But the impact that um, digitalization of healthcare clearly shows is that um, the ownership of the health data of an individual creates an empowerment, empowerment about awareness of healthy living and how that basically translates into the well-being of the individuals so people are not expecting the healthcare system to deliver for them but they take action. The issue around digitalization of healthcare is also about social inclusion and equity of the access to these services and we have seen that Having the physical infrastructure is only one step. Having the digital literacy of the individual citizens of the others. So in the case of Laurent's uh, vision, uh, we have obviously more challenges in the rural aging environment to actually come up to see, uh, to actually exploit the potential of digital health services. But what we have seen in the study, um, quite a few examples how um, the healthcare is delivered at a higher uh, quality level from the diagnosis all the way uh, to therapy and longer term care. So there is good uh, evidence for that. The other one is the more economic aspect and that is um, can we do that uh, healthcare in a way that is saving time and money for the professionals who deliver that care and for the overall health system which is basically uh, having an issue of sustainability uh, getting 10-15% of um, expenditure of an individual country. And what we have seen, there are uh, quite a few actions taken at the European level uh, to create that infrastructure, to defragment that type of market, to give access to healthcare providers at the European scale, um, and uh, basically fulfilling the um, um, vision of the digital uh, single market. Uh, unfortunately, this is still a very fragmented picture, and uh, what we uh, need is better monitoring and more independent evaluation of these. 
So quickly going uh, what uh, benefit it can bring to territories. Uh, territories, the local authorities are ultimately responsible to deliver health and care for their uh, residents and many have smart specialization uh, strategies. But we also see the disparity across Europe in terms of awareness, uh, acceptability and, and interoperability. And that's very key components of uh, delivering health in a region. So uh, going to the individual level, what uh, digitalization uh, will enable is the mobility. Mobility across borders, we heard yesterday, and mobility in terms of uh, uh, working other parts of uh, Europe. And the connected health facility, uh, connected Europe facility is actually providing countries uh, the means to uh, build that infrastructure. So very uh, quickly to... Um, provide uh, three examples. In uh, Slovenia, for example, they uh, created a network uh, of regional uh, hospitals uh, for uh, dealing with uh, stroke. And uh, that, in the last uh, two years, already delivered services for uh, over 2,000 uh, patients. And it was a very effective way of uh, making uh, healthcare delivery more efficient. And the other one is uh, the example of Finland's virtual hospitals. And they created that um, to target very uh, specific problems. And they create a continuity of care. They have a patient pathway. And already, uh, al although it's only the first couple of years of its existence, uh, delivers a big uh, change in the way in our case, we mapped diabetes, and we saw how diabetes is dealt uh, from end to end using digital solutions. And finally, um, this is um, the future, how um, e-prescription and e-summary can be shared across European countries. And from January of this year, uh, we have seen that e-prescriptions are accepted in Estonia that were um, issued uh, in Finland. So it's a good first example how digitalization will help um, citizens of Europe. Thank you.